Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at the Forest Smite starter deck. First off we'll take a look at the deck list and play game with the deck without making any changes to it. And then afterwards we'll gradually upgrade the deck. First off using all the free cards we get from the Mastery Tree and from the various green two color decks. And then afterwards we'll round out the deck using some wild cards as well and play some games with the fully upgraded deck. So let's dive right into it here. Forest Might is a mono green deck featuring a bunch of pump spells and auras to boost up our creatures, drawing extra cards through cards like Season of Growth as one of our main payoff cards. So at one mana we've got three copies of Giant Growth, a nice one mana instant giving plus three plus three to one of our creatures until end of turn. At two mana we've got three copies of Greenwood Sentinel as a two mana 2-2 two -two with Vigilance. We've got four copies of Silhana Wayfinder as a two mana 2-1 two that can take a look at the top four cards of our library, reveal a creature or land and put it on top of our deck. We've got three copies of Barkhide Troll as a two mana 2-2 two -two that enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it. And for one mana we can give the Barkhide Troll Hexproof if we remove a plus one plus one counter from him. We've got a full play set of Growth Cycle giving plus three plus three until end of turn and gets an additional plus two plus two for each copy of Growth Cycle in our graveyard. We've got three copies of Rabbit Bite as one of our removal spells, letting one of our creatures deal damage equal to its power to another target creature we don't control. Then we've got three copies of Season of Growth, which is our main card draw engine in the deck. As a two-mana enchantment, it says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we get to scry one, so we can look for whatever card we're missing. And then whenever we cast a spell that targets a creature we control, we get to draw a card. Then at three mana, we've got our three copies of Oaken Form, an enchantment aura that we can put on one of our creatures, giving it a permanent plus three plus three bonus. We also have a few generous strays as a one-two creature that draws a card when it enters the battlefield. We also have three copies of Silverback Shaman as a 5-4 with Trample that draws a card when it dies. And as our curve toppers we have one Aggressive Mammoth, six mana for an 8-8 Trampler giving other creatures we control Trample as well. One Gargos Vicious Watcher as a six mana 8-7 with Vigilance that makes Hydra spells cost four less to cast. And whenever a creature we control becomes the target of a spell, then Gargos will fight up to one target creature we don't control. And then last but not least, we have a Meteor Golem that can destroy target a non-land permanent an opponent controls when it enters the battlefield. And then our mana base is 25 basic forests. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into a game and see our deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and our hand has some potential with double season of growth and a giant growth as one of our pump spells. Uh, we only have one creature in Generous Tray, but if we find a third land we get to play it. So I think this is probably worth the risk. And then if we find a third land, we're off to the races. Alright, there we go. Facing turn one Dismal Backwater into an untapped Watery Grave. And a Thought Erasure that can take a look at our hand. Might take away the Generous Tray, might take away one of the Seasons of Growth. Takes away the Season. And puts a Massacre Girl in the Graveyard. Alright, so next turn we can hope to play Generous Tray. We get to Scry one first from Season and then draw a card. Alright, Tomebound Lich points towards some sort of reanimator deck as our opponent discards Villas, Broker of Blood. So they could potentially reanimate that next turn with a Blood for Bones. And there's not much we can do about it. So we'll scry first and then draw. And I don't think we need more lands. Just need to find a couple more creatures here. Lich has Death Touch, so don't want to block. But uh, taking the damage is also pretty bad, since now opponent gets to loot, draw a card and discard. Discards a Rotting Regisaur, and it's going to be a second Tomebound Lich. And Death Touch lines up quite well against our pump spells and green creatures in general, since we don't have much removal. And as soon as we run into those Death Touch creatures, or creatures will die, even if they're bigger. I suppose we can attack with the Generous Tray, and then use a Pump Spell to trade for the Lich. But our opponent probably just takes it, knowing our hands. 
All right, they are willing to make the trade. And I suppose we can use a growth cycle just to be a bit more mana efficient. And play another creature. Sentinel's pretty low impact here, so we'll bottom it. I'm not opposed to trading Troll for Lich, just to shut off a potential Blood for Bones. And we have another Troll as backup here. Thought Erasure might take that away. So now it's less clear if we're supposed to trade. Alright, takes away the Giant Growth instead. So now, again, I'm happy trading for the Lich if they offer. But our opponent's gonna hang back. Not a growth cycle, so yeah, we'll start attacking. Opponent does trade. Also gotta watch out for that blast zone, which could take up to two and take out Troll and uh, Season of Growth. But that's gonna require a lot of mana. So hopefully we can make something happen before then. Rabbit Bite would have been a pretty good draw to get rid of the Lich. Now I don't know if we're supposed to keep it. If my opponent, let's say, plays a Rotting Regisaur, then I can use my Pump Spell in combination with Rabbit Bite to take it out, which would be pretty good. If they play another Lich, then the Rabbit Bite's gonna be good. And I suppose the Troll does have some built-in Hexproof, so we should be able to beat a removal spell. So yeah, I guess I'll keep the Rabbit Bite. And pass a turn, since we want to keep up the Hexproof ability instead of tapping out for an Oaken form. Alright, they do have another Lich, so that makes that Rabbit Bite look pretty good. Opponents just digging for lands, they probably have a way of reanimating a creature in hand. But they're just looking for the lands to cast them. Discards Agent of Treachery, which is also a scary card. Hopefully that reanimation spell is a Blood for Bones and we can shut it down thanks to this uh, Rabbit Bite. And since we drew a land, we're safe to play this Oaken form. And get in for six. So we still have a pretty long way ahead of us. Opponent's still at 16. Though his Lich has bought him quite a bit of time. There's land five, so might see a reanimation spell here. Instead, it's gonna be God Eternal Kefnets. 4-5 Flyer. Alright, can still attack into it at least. Another Oaken form. So this growth cycle currently is plus 5, plus 5, since there's one in the graveyard. So if I Oaken form again, and growth cycle, let's say if they take it, we still don't have lethal, but I also just want to draw cards with seasons, so I feel like I should play this. The only concern here is the blast zone that can blow up the troll and that does get past the hexproof. But uh, it's gonna take a couple turns for the opponent to set that up. Opponent takes it. I think I'm gonna go for the growth cycle. If we draw into another instant speed pump spell, we could kill them. It's gonna be a generous stray instead. So our opponent takes 14. Down to two. But next turn they'll be able to chump with Kefnet at the very least. Kefnet revealed Blood for Bones. So they can cast that thanks to the ability. Add a discount. Sacrifice Kefnet and reanimate something from the graveyard. Let's see what that uh, will be here. And they'll also be able to get back a second creature to put into their hands, so they can replay another Lich here. So, that's pretty annoying. Cavalier won't be able to kill anything at least. But the Lich is actually the biggest problem. Alright, opponent's gonna go for a second Blood for Bones instead of playing the Lich. And what do they get back this time? A Lich from the Cavalier's ability. And then I guess they can get back another Lich or another Cavalier, we'll see. So now our opponent's engines are finally functioning properly. 
and we're going to be in trouble here. We had a small window to top deck the win if we found another pump spell, but now the window is closing. Opponent gets a Villas Broker of Blood. Alright, let's play Generous Stray, hoping to find a Rabbit Bite here to kill the Lich. So we'll scry first. And there we go, perfect. Draw the Rabbit Bite, and I think we're supposed to kill the Lich, so they have to chump with Villas. And Rabbit Bite is not a fight spell, so the Lich doesn't deal any damage to the Troll. So the Troll can attack, opponent will have to chump. And then we can still play a Wayfinder as well. Opponent chumps. Play Wayfinder. And here... I think I will scry first, since otherwise we kind of waste the scry if we use the ability first. Generous Stray. Do I want a Generous Stray? With this much mana, it's probably fine, since that allows me to play it, scry, and then draw a card. And I'll keep the Generous Stray on top. And this land's pretty important for us to keep up the Hexproof on the Troll. So let's see what opponent can come up with. They could just play two more copies of Tomebound Lich which technically keeps him alive. It's gonna be Concoct, letting the opponent surveil three, and then return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. So opponent going for a Hail Mary. And what do they get back? It's gonna be Cavalier. That's fine. So that's gonna be on Chumblock duty. And we're gonna be looking for another Rabbit Bite to help us close out the game. So I'll scry first. Forest to the bottom. Draw forest anyway, but we are free to attack with everyone since our opponent will be forced to chum block the Bark High Troll. Otherwise they're dead. And we'll get in three damage, but our opponent will gain four. And a Cavalier will return another Lich. Which lets the opponent draw and discard. Discards one of the Liches, will play the Shaman and still have one mana up for the Troll. And bottom the land. Alright. Let's see what opponent can come up with here. Now the Silverback they can easily steal with, let's say, an Agent of Treachery, since it doesn't have built-in Hexproof. Not a Lich. It's not the first one we've seen this game. Discards a Thought Erasure since we're empty-handed. And opponent's gonna have to pass a turn. And there's a Rabbit Bite, so that could be the game winner here. We'll use our troll, since we can always give it hexproof, so that's a safe target. And wow, her opponent explodes, so we were able to beat a blue-black reanimator deck with our mono-green starter deck. Pretty impressive. Alright, so let's take a look at our deck here. So despite the unlikely win against the reanimator deck, we can still definitely improve the deck quite a bit here. So first off, if you get the account mastery tree with a new account and get your first game in with the mono green deck you will unlock an extra copy of greenwood sentinel and the game automatically recommends adding the greenwood sentinel and then cutting one copy of a silhana wayfinder to make room for it so the game will automatically suggest this next up after unlocking one more mastery orb in the mastery tree and unlocking the weight advantage upgrade, the game will add three copies of Gnar Black Rhino. And for those of you who already had an account, you will be able to find three copies of Gnar Black Rhino in your account as well. A 4 4 Trampler that essentially has the same ability as Season of Growth, so great target for pump spells. And then the game automatically suggests to cut three copies of Silhana Wayfinder to make room for them. So all the Wayfinders are now gone. 
Then next up, if you get a mouse to feed upgrade and a mastery tree, you will unlock the fourth copy of a rabbit bite, you'll get a second copy of Gargo's Vicious Watcher, and you will also get one copy of Voracious Hydra, which of course also plays quite well with Gargos, since Gargos makes Hydras cost 4 mana less, which means you can sink more mana into the X from Voracious Hydra, which can either come into play with X plus 1 plus 1 counters that then get doubled, or the Hydra will fight up to one target creature you don't control, so an excellent curve topper for the deck. And the game automatically suggests to cut the three copies of Generous Tray, so those will all be gone if we follow the game suggestion. Then next up, if you get the Breakthrough upgrade in the Mastery Tree, you will unlock one copy of Prized Unicorn, which for those that already have an account will also be added to your account. So a 4 mana 2-2 that says all creatures able to block Prize Unicorn do so, so plays quite well with pump spells if uh, you force your opponent to block this, then use a pump spell, you can maybe take out something from the opponent, and of course also allows your other creatures to attack to get in damage. Then you also get one copy of Awake Root Elemental, which is another curve topper for the deck, 6 mana 5-5, five five. And for 5 mana we can untap target land we control and turn it into a 5-5 five five elemental creature with haste, that's still land. And then finally we also get a second copy of Aggressive Mammoth, so now we have quite a few curve toppers added to the deck. And then to make room for these new cards the game automatically suggests to cut 3 copies of Oaken Form, which will remove some of the synergy we had with the Season of Growth, but instead opting to kind of play some bigger creatures to win the game instead. So this is where you end up if you follow the game's instructions and upgrade the deck with just a mastery tree. Now if you unlock all the different two-color guilds, you can add a few cards without having to use any wild cards yet. So we'll go over all the different green guilds here. In the Gruel guild, you unlock one copy of Pelt Collector. That can be slotted into the deck in the one-drop slot as a one-mana one-one that will grow over time picking up some plus one plus one counters and eventually trample as well. Then we also get one copy of Thrash Threats, which may seem like a weird inclusion in a mono green deck, but we're only interested in the Thrash half of the card, which is basically just an improved version of Rabbit Bite. It's instant speed and it can also target Planeswalkers, so we'll add one of those. And then we also get one copy of Stomping Ground to complement our Thrash Threats. So this is just a land that counts as both a forest and a mountain, so it can make a red mana to maybe help us cast the threat half of the card. It's not super important that we add Stomping Ground to the deck, you can just run only forests since the two damage can be relevant and we only have one copy of Thrash Threat, but uh, we will add one copy for now and cut one forest for it. And to make room for the two other cards, we will cut the Meter Golem, which is a bit expensive at 7 mana, and then we're also going to cut the Prize Unicorn, which is a little bit underpowered as a 4 mana 2 2 that can easily be dealt with, and the ability is not always relevant. So we're back down to 60. Then the next guild that gives us some new tools is Celestia, that gives us Assure Assemble, another one of those split cards, but again, we're only interested in the left half of the card, which is Assure, double green essentially, to give a creature a plus one plus one counter and make it indestructible until end of turn. So this can potentially save our creature from a sweeper effect or a removal spell, can also come in handy against Death Touch, for example. So we'll add one of these, and to make room for Assure Assemble, we're going to cut one copy of Aggressive Mammoth just to start lowering the curve of the deck a little bit, since we have a few too many 5 and 6 drops at the moment. Next up we move to the Simic Guild, which gives us two copies of Sorform Hybrid, which is a 2 mana 2-2, two -two, with an activated ability for 6 mana, Adapt 4, which means we can put 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the Hybrid if it didn't already have any plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, turning it into a 6-6 six -six creature. So this can be played early, do some damage, and then later in the game we can turn it into a 6-6. Six -six. So it's a bit better than having too many expensive cards in the deck, since this can still be a nice early play as well. So we'll add two copies of Sorform Hybrid, and to make room for the hybrids we will cut two copies of Greenwood Sentinel, since Vigilance is not too relevant, and we would much rather have Adapt 4 in the late game. So we'll cut two Sentinels, and then the final guild that gives us some new tools is the Golgari guild, Black Green, and that gives us access to two copies of Crawl Harpooner, which is a 2 mana 3-2 Insect Warrior with Reach, and also has an ability when it enters the battlefield, gets plus X plus O, where X is the number of creatures in our graveyard, and then it can fight up to one target flying creature from the opponent, so that can be useful against some decks, but we're mainly just interested in a 2 mana 3-2 that can attack for a lot of damage early on. 
And again, we'll cut two copies of Greenwood Sentinel to make room for the Harpooners. So this is where our deck ends up after we upgrade it with the Mastery Tree and with all the green cards we can find in the different guild decks. So we haven't had to use any wild cards yet. Now, from this point forward, we can take the deck in a number of different directions to upgrade it. We can just put a bunch of powerful rares and mythics in here, like uh, Questing Beasts, Vivians, Nissals, and we would have a fine deck. But instead, to stay with the theme of the deck, which was originally Season of Growth plus Pump Spells, we're gonna try and be a little bit more synergistic and work the Pump Spell angle of the deck instead. So first off, we'll take a look at all the commons we can add to the deck in order of importance, and then next up we'll do the same with the uncommons, the rares and the mythics, although, spoiler alert, there's not going to be any mythics required for this specific build. So starting with the commons, the first one we're going to add to the deck is a fourth copy of Giant Growth as just a very efficient pump spell for our deck. And then next up we want to add some more cheap creatures to the deck, since these uh, pump spell focused decks really want to start out by playing a few cheap creatures that they can then enhance with pump spells, instead of necessarily relying on more expensive creatures to get the job done, since you would much rather spend the early turns developing your board, and then the late part of the game using your pump spells, instead of having a hand that has pump spells in the early turns which you can't use, and then a few uh, clunky expensive creatures that will be uh, too slow to help you win the game. So the first cheap creature at common we can add to the deck is a Wildwood Tracker from Eldraine. So 1 mana, 1-1 one, one Elf Warrior, that says when the tracker attacks or blocks, if you control another non-human creature, the tracker gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. So the tracker itself is an Elf Warrior, which means that if you have two copies of Wildwood Tracker in play, they will both be able to attack as 2-2s. Two so it's a nice little one drop for the deck. Not uh, super exciting, definitely worse than Pelt Collector, but it can still help us kind of curve out and apply pressure early. So we will add four trackers to the deck, and those are all the common wild cards we will need. And then to make room for these five new cards, we're going to cut one forest since we're trying to lower the curve of the deck, and with a lower curve we need fewer lands. So we can cut one forest, we're going to cut one aggressive mammoth to start lowering the curve, we're going to cut the Wakeroot Elemental, which is also pretty expensive and clunky, and then we're also going to cut one Silverback Shaman, lowering the number to two, and we're also going to cut the Assure Assemble, since we have uh, plenty of combat tricks already, now with the Giant Growth, an additional copy as well. Next up we can take a look at the uncommons we can add to the deck, and the first one that jumps out is a new one from Throne of Aldrain, which is Sir Farron, the Henchhammer, 2 mana for a 2-2 legendary creature that says whenever Sir Farron attacks, another target attacking creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is Sir Farron's power. So plays great with pump spells, of course, since we can just enhance Sir Farron, and then our other creature will be enormous as well, so that can represent a ton of damage out of nowhere. So even though it's legendary, we're still going to add all four copies of Sir Farron to the deck, just because it's so powerful. It is a bit of a nombo with our Wildwood Tracker, since it is a human, so curving turn 1 Wildwood Tracker into a turn 2 Sir Farron doesn't feel great, but we still kind of need both cards in the deck, so we'll have to just deal with it. Then the next uncommon we want to add to the deck is a fourth copy of Season of Growth, since this is just such an important card draw engine in the deck, and uh, the difference it makes of having one in play and not having one in play is huge, so we want to make sure we can have at least one copy in play every game, and uh, having multiples is still pretty good, since we will get to scry multiple times when playing creatures and drawing multiple cards when targeting our creatures, so it's actually pretty good to have multiples sometimes. So we'll add a fourth Season of Growth, and then we're also going to round out our playset of Barkhide Trolls as our last uncommon added to the deck, just as a powerful 3-3 creature that can uh, pump up our Pelt Collector, it's not a human, so it plays well with our Wildwood Tracker, and the built-in Hexproof means that it's a safe target for pump spells as well, so we don't get blown out by opposing removal spells at instant speed. And then to make room for these uncommons, we're going to have to cut some 2-drops, since we've added a bunch more. So we're going to cut the 2 Crawl Harpooners and the 2 Sorform Hybrids, since we're also going to play fewer lands, so it's going to be less likely for us to have 6 mana to adapt the Hybrid in the first place. And then we're also going to cut the 2 Silverback Shamans, which are fine curve toppers, but again, we're trying to lower the curve of the deck so we can play creatures early, and then back them up with pump spells later. Gargos is still quite synergistic in the deck, since if we target it with a pump spell, then it can uh, fight an opposing creature, which can be quite powerful. So we'll keep two Gargos for now, 
but eventually those will get cut as well as we try and further lower the curve of the deck. And now it's time to add some rares to the deck, and the first rare we will add are three copies of a Yorvo, a Lord of Garenbrig, three mana for essentially a 4-4 creature as it enters the battlefield with four plus one plus one counters on it, and whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under our control, Yorvo picks up an extra plus one plus one counter on it, and then if that creature's power is greater than Yorvo's power, we can put an extra plus one plus one counter on Yorvo, but uh, we won't have any creatures bigger than Yorvo, once we're done upgrading the deck, so it's just going to be a 3 mana 4-4 that grows over time as we play more green creatures. And as you notice, we don't have many 3 drops in the deck, in fact we don't have any at the moment, so Yorvo is pretty important to kind of fill out the curve. It's an extra non-human for the Wildwood Tracker, and it's also a nice 4-4 to help grow the Pelt Collector, so it's an excellent addition to the deck. And of course, since we're mono green, the triple green mana cost is not an issue. So we'll add 3 Yorvos. Next up we're going to complete the playset of Pelt Collectors, again lowering the curve of the deck, adding a cheap aggressive creature so we can back it up with pump spells, plays great with some of our 2 drops like the Troll and uh, Yorvo of course. So just a nice creature that can grow over time and apply a lot of early pressure. So we're going to complete the playset of Pelt Collectors. And then finally we're also going to complete our playset of Thrash Threat. Now this is a pretty minor upgrade over Rabbit Bite, so if you don't have the rare wild cards, then uh, no sweat, you can just run the Rabbit Bites instead. But the instant speed can matter, especially with a card like Wildwood Tracker that gets a bonus when it attacks, or uh, Sir Farron. So you can potentially attack and then before the opponent gets a chance to block, you can use a Thrash at instant speed to take something out. And against a more controlling deck that doesn't have a lot of creatures, being able to take out a Planeswalker with it is also nice. So we're gonna add three more copies of Thrash Threat. And then to make room for these new additions, we're gonna lower the curve of the deck even more. So we're gonna cut two forests, we're gonna cut both copies of Gargos. Even though it does play well with pump spells, it often comes down too late, or at a point where you've already deployed your hand and don't have any pump spells left in hand. So we don't really mind cutting it. Now that we have fewer lands and no Gargos, it also makes sense to cut the one copy of Voracious Hydra. And then finally we're gonna cut the four copies of Rabbit Bite to make room for the Thrash Threat as an improvement. Now we're still only going to play one Stomping Ground, but if you feel like it, you could easily add three more copies of Stomping Ground to potentially help cast the Threat half of Thrash Threat, which of course would make it quite more valuable than Rabbit Bite in some situations. But uh, for the purposes of this video, we're just going to keep one Stomping Ground, since more often than not, we're just going to cast Thrash anyway, and uh, taking extra damage from Stomping Ground can also matter in some matchups. So yeah, this rounds out our deck, so as you can see, a nice low curve, two powerful one drops in Pelt Collector and Wildwood Tracker. Then at two mana we've got the Troll, Sir Farron and Season of Growth as our card draw engine. And then at three we've got the Yorvo that can help grow Pelt Collectors, a non-creature for the Tracker that can apply a lot of pressure. And then as our curve topper we have three Rhinos which has Trample and is a built-in card draw engine, so a great recipient for pump spells. And then we can potentially also cast a Threat Half of Thrash Threat. This is our main removal spell in the deck. And then we have 8 pump spells with Giant Growth and Growth Cycle. I do prefer Growth Cycle over the alternative, which is Titanic Growth, which is still standard legal, since it was in one of the additional products in M20. So you could potentially play Titanic Growth, giving plus 4 plus 4 for 2 mana, but you do find yourself often drawing multiple copies of Growth Cycle, especially if you're going off with Season of Growth or the Gnarlback Rhino. So the extra bonus from Growth Cycle does tend to come up, so I think I slightly prefer Growth Cycle over Titanic Growth, even though you could potentially play a couple copies of Titanic Growth as well, in addition to the four Giant Growths and four Growth Cycles. So yeah, this is our deck. Now there is potentially still room for improvement. We could add a couple more Stomping Grounds to help us cast the Threat Half of Thrash Threat. Could even add a couple copies of Castle Garenbrig, although we don't have a ton of expensive creatures, so it would be pretty marginal. So this is where we ended up. Now it's time to customize the deck some more, so we're gonna put Sir Farron in the picture. We're gonna choose a sleeve. And we're gonna add some of our favorite basic lands to the deck. And then uh, change the title as well. And then we're ready to rumble. Alright, Forest Smite version 2. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and we have a reasonable hand, there's a bit of a lack of pump spells, but uh, we can curve out nicely with a turn 1 tracker, turn 2 maybe troll into Yorvo. 
And then if we pick up some pump spells, it's gonna play well with Sir Farron. Facing a tapped Sacred Foundry. Alright, looks like some sort of Jeskai deck, so we can definitely expect to face some Sweeper effects. Which is not what we want, since our deck is quite soft to Sweepers. But um, I feel inclined to still run some more threats out there, since we're not applying any pressure at the moment. I think I'm still going to play the Troll. So we can attack for two. We don't have the Hexproof up for the Troll, but it does add the most pressure. Deafening Clarence is going to kill both. But now we can play Yorvo. And hopefully that gets to stick around. The Royal Science lets my opponent draw and discard. And the Temple of Epiphany scries to the bottom. Alright, so now we've got some options. I think I'm just gonna go all in here and hope they don't have something like a time wipe to wipe the board. So let's go Pelt Collector. Sir Farron, which bumps up Belt Collector as well, and Tracker, and I'm gonna send Yorvo at the Royal Science, so they're less likely to draw into whatever sweeper they need here, and cross our fingers that we're not dead. Alright, Deafening Clarion at least doesn't kill Yorvo. Play the Rhino pre-combat to pump up Yorvo some more. Attack for 8. And we do have our opponent dead on board, but of course there's plenty of uh, cards our opponent could play here to mess us up. Makes a dragon, so if we can draw a Thrash Threats, our opponent's dead. Instead it's going to be a Season of Growth. So I think we should just go face with both. Opponent's going to be forced to probably trade the dragon for the rhino. We do leave Sarkhan in play, but hopefully that's not going to be a huge deal. Come on. <laughs> Watch this. So if we did have a pump spell here, the game would have been over, since the rhino of course tramples to uh, kill the dragon and probably kill our opponent as well, since our pump spells are plus 3 power at least. Alright, Narset's pretty good against our Season of Growth. Opponent's gonna go digging for some answers, finds another Sarkon, which they currently can cast. And yeah, opponent just has to scoop it up, an 8-8 Yorvo is too much for them to handle. So despite running face first into a couple Deafening Clarions, just making a big Yorvo was good enough, and if we did have a pump spell, then we could have ended the game even sooner. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand, some early creatures, a season, Sir Farron and a pump spell. So pretty decent looking opening hand. Facing turn one mountain into score spitter, so this is the cavalcade red deck. The first creature I play has a pretty high likelihood of getting killed as well. I also don't really mind trading for the Spitter since we have multiple creatures in hand. So I think I'll just play the Tracker first. Since the Pelt Collector is a bit more valuable. Tracker does get shocked. And a Dodger, so opponent can attack for three. Alright, since... Um, we didn't manage to trade, I think I'm kind of forced to play Sir Farron here. Could also go double Pelt Collector, next turn Sir Farron can grow both. But the Pelt Collectors don't have good blocks on the creatures in play. I think I'm still gonna play Sir Farron here, and hope they don't have another shock. So I can actually block these creatures and not take too much damage. It's gonna be a Chandra Spitfire, definitely a scary card. In combination with the Score Spitter. Alright, I guess now I'm gonna go Season into Belt Collector. And a Rhino. 
Rhino would be okay, but I really need to find an answer for the Spitfire, I think. So that means digging for a Thrash Threats. Although Rhino plays well with the Pelt Collectors too. I think I'm gonna keep it, but I could just die to the Spitfire here. And leave Sir Farron on defense. There's a Cavalcade, so that represents a lot of damage. Might just be dead here. Yep, Spitfire hits for 13, and yeah, not much we can do about it. So, pretty impressive turn 4 kill from our opponents. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable looking hand, turn 1 tracker, turn 2 troll, couple bomb spells. No Season of Growth, no Sir Farron, those are kind of the cards we're looking for. But uh, definitely can't Mulligan. Facing Turn 1 Islands. Attack for 2. And if we are up against, let's say, blue-green flash, then this hand is actually quite good. And yep, there we see the Spectral Sailor. Since we have early pressure backed up by instant speed interaction, and that's kind of the recipe for beating the blue-green flash deck. Being on the play also helps. Opponent's gonna bounce the troll. Fair enough. Season of Growth, an excellent pickup. I'm just gonna play both creatures here. Instead of keeping up Hexproof, I think I would rather just make sure we have as much pressure in play as possible. Yeah, let's play the Season of Growth. And this is probably getting countered. Nope. Attack with all. And I could use Giant Growth on the Troll just to draw an extra card here. And then if they do try and bounce it, I can still give it Hexproof at least. But I do want to keep at least one pump spell in hand to maybe beat a Nightpack Ambusher if they try and block. Opponent's going to counter the Giant Growth. We still get to draw a card though. Belt Collector, good pickup. So we'll play that. Over keeping up Hexproof. And a dig for some more pump spells here. Opponent's digging with opt, so that's not a good sign for them. So yeah, blue-green flash can be a very good deck if it's on the play and if it has good answers at the right time. But uh, against relevant early pressure, it can definitely struggle, so this was a good showcase. All right, so that's gonna round out our upgrade guide with our mono green forest smite deck. So let me know in the comments which one we should cover next. But for now, I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.